this lesson, we'll learn how to make selections by using specific attributes such as tone and color. For example, we've already seen how the magic wand tool works. It lets you specify a range of similar tones when you click on an area like so. When you click on an area, it creates a selection that's based on the tolerance value and some of these other options that are checked above in the options bar. When you check the contiguous option in the options bar, and I click on the same area that I clicked on before, you'll find that it selects similar tones that lie immediately next to each other. At this point, you'd have to shift click to select other tones, like so. Or you can select either the grow command or the similar command from the select menu. Both of these commands use the tolerance value to create a selection, so be sure to set that up first in either case. To limit a non-contiguous selection, to a certain area. This is the way I do it. First I make a rough selection of the area using the Lesso tool. Then I switch to the magic wand and set up a tolerance that's suitable to the colors that I want to select. In this case I'll leave it set to about 50 because there's quite a bit of variation in the reds in the strawberries. Then hold down either the control key on the Macintosh or right click on the PC and click on an area that you wish to select. This brings up the contextual menu and you can proceed to select the option that lets you intersect with the previous selection. And you'll end up with a much tighter non-contiguous selection which you can develop from here. The color range tool works a lot like the magic wand tool does while building a mask on the fly. Just like we saw with the magic wand tool, you can work inside of a selection to narrow the focus. So for example, to work with colors in the lower half of the image, I can make a loose selection of the area first and then choose color range from the select menu. In addition to letting you sample colors, it also lets you select an object by its color and tonal attributes. You might want to start out by checking the color selections that it offers, particularly if your goal was to select objects of a particular color. And it builds a selection mask for you for all of the reds in this selected area. Now unfortunately, it doesn't offer any controls to expand or contract this particular selection range. And so we end up with a very weak selection. As you can see, we don't have any pure whites that indicate the red areas in the selection. That's partly because there are other colors that are mixed in with the red, such as orange and yellow or burgundy. So in this case, it might be best to stay with the option called sampled colors. Now to sample a color in this selected area, hold down the command or the control key and sample from the image preview. Or you can simply click directly onto the image window that's visible. Once you click on an area, it creates the initial starting selection. Now you can hold down the shift key to click on additional colors and add to the selection mask that it's building on the fly. I like to start with a fairly low fuzziness value which is somewhat similar to the tolerance value. And this creates a very accurate selection at the beginning and then you can experiment with increasing the fuzziness when you've gathered up most of the related tones and colors. And you'll see that it's expanding the selected areas based on this fuzziness control. It also adds some very useful soft transitions to our selections. And now that we have our selected area, you can adjust the selection using any other selection tool. For example, if you had any stray areas that were selected, or particularly if there are areas that are selected that you don't want to include, you can go ahead and hold down the option or the Alt key while excluding that from your selection. Of course, you'll hold down the Shift key to add areas to your selection, just like with any other selection tool. Now that I have my areas selected, I might make any change. For example, I might go into my adjustment layer and add, say, a hue saturation layer and increase my saturation. That makes these colors really pop. Or even change the hue to a slightly more magenta color. And here's a quick before and after. Here I'm going to show you a case study 
where you can see how to use the color range feature to produce some interesting solarization effects. Now, solarization is a photography technique where the highlights or the light parts of the image and the shadows or the dark parts of the image are inverted, leaving the middle tones just the way they were. And this effect produces some very interesting color inversal results which are quite attractive and I'll show you how to do that using the color range feature. First choose color range then in order to invert the highlights and shadows here's what you'll need to do. First choose one of the attributes in this case I'll choose the highlights and click OK. Now all the light areas in the image are now selected. Now here's the important step hold down the shift key and choose color range again. And this time we'll choose the other attribute which is shadows and click OK. This selection incidentally includes the highlights as well as the shadows and the reason for having two of these areas selected at once is because I had held down the shift key as I selected the second attribute. Very important step. Now I'm going to go ahead and save the selection so I'll click on the channels tab and click on the save selection as channel icon. Now I'm going to click back onto the layers palette and here we have everything selected. I'm going to duplicate the channel or the layer so that we keep our changes separate from the original and then I'm going to go ahead and load the channel that we had saved which is this alpha 1 channel switch back to layers and now all that I do to produce the inversal effect is to type command or control I on the keyboard. I inverts the colors and I'm going to deselect and here you see that I have a very nice solarization effect that was added to my image created very simply using the color range feature.